Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm uh, April Cushing. I'm one of the adult services librarians at the uh, Norwood Library. And we are very happy to be welcoming back Sandia Jane this evening. Uh, she did a wonderful demonstration over the summer on Indian dishes made easy. And tonight she's going to be uh, making two uh, popular dishes, uh, one of which is butter paneer, which is often served for special occasions. And as a dessert, she's going to be showing us how to prepare gujia. Um, what's the proper pronunciation? Gujia, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is a traditional um, traditionally served during Diwali. So um, if anybody is planning on cooking along with Sandia tonight, um, she would like to know. So if you don't mind uh, just typing that into the chat, she will have an idea of how many people are also um, cooking with her. Okay, thank you. All right, go ahead, Sandia, anytime you're ready. Yeah, hi. You are too. So excited to see all you, all of you guys here joining in for this cooking session. And uh, April reached out to me to do something for Diwali, and I thought of butter paneer because it's a rich dish, as the name calls for it. It's butter, <laughs> and we'll also put cream in it. And paneer is an Indian cheese, which is also kind of rich. So it, it's it's saved. Such dis dishes are usually saved for special occasions. It's got cashews, cream, butter, I and mean, we can't go wrong, can we? The other dish that I thought we'd do is gujia. And I, you might not be familiar with it. I see one Indian lady here, Sanjana. Uh, it's a very typical Indian dish that people from India or, or people who are coming from Indian families might be familiar with. It's like an empanada. Uh, sweet empanada, and it's stuffed with milk solids and dried fruits and uh, deep fried. Now, my challenge was I did not want you to, to go through the whole process of making the dough and then deep frying it, which is um, not very easy and it's pretty cumbersome. So I kind of Americanized it in my own version of it. So you will get all the flavors of gujia without having to make the dough or deep frying it. Okay, so what we'll do is we we'll kind of multitask today. So if you have told April who's cooking along, I will have a good idea how to space my how to space this whole session. Um, if you're not, just enjoy watching. You learn a lot just by watching. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll hop between one step and another. We'll start with the gujia because I need the crust or the empanada part to go in the oven. And then we will change gears and make our butter paneer. While the butter paneer is simmering and cooking, that's when we pull out the casings for our gujia, which is an Indian dessert, and then fill it with a filling that we'll find time to make sometime during the session. Okay, so if at any point you think I'm going a little bit fast, just just send an email, just send a message to April and she will just stop me right there. Okay, because as much as possible, I want you to cook along with me. Um, excuse me, Sandia, can I just um, interject with a question here? A couple yeah. of our um, patrons have asked um, if they could substitute ground ground cardamom for pods because they weren't able to find the pods. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you are, uh, we'll use some cardamom for our uh, dessert too. So I can show you how to turn it into powder. It might take a little bit longer, but maybe for today you can uh, use a little bit of it. You still have a really good dessert because it takes a while to turn it into powder for the dessert. As far as butter paneer is concerned, you can just put it, it's, it's all going to go in the blender. So pods is fine. Yeah, we'll work with parts in short. <laughs> Any other question, April? Is that, that was the only one? I can't hear you, you're on mute, yeah. That's all, oh. That's all I have um, seen so far in the chat, but if I, um, if any more questions come up, I will be sure, oh, I'll I'm be sure to mention them. No, nobody's cooking with us, April, in this session? Yes, we do have a couple people cooking along. Okay, 
So yes. those people just stop us. Okay, so I hope your philo sheets are uh, thawed. That was one of the pre prep steps. And I hope you have cooked down your ricotta till it is really crumbly and dry with a few specks of brown. Okay, so this is these were the two requirements to cook along because it takes a while for that to happen. So with that, let me start with what I have here. So if you've never cooked down ricotta, you'll surprise yourself how delicious it tastes once you cook it down. There's a natural sweetness to it. And it really replicates an Indian ingredient which uses milk solids. So this is what I've done. I have just, oh, <laughs> I lost some of it. <laughs> I, I have cooked down my ricotta here and it is very crumbly with a few specks of brown to it. Okay, so this will be our filling and we'll come to it later. So I hope you've done that before beforehand. Um, now, so Sandhya? Yeah. Um, we've got one more question. Somebody has um, mentioned that they don't have cashews and would it be okay to um, substitute almonds or pecans or walnuts yeah. and which one would you recommend to that case? So I like to kind of stay away from pecans and walnuts here just because they have a very strong flavor and it may not complement cardamom. So I would say go with almonds or go with pistachios, go with raisins, apricots, Okay, thank you so much. Okay. So what I have here, now I'm gonna pull my camera down, but April is my eyes and ears here. So she will keep talking to me. So feel free to chat and she will let me know what's going on. I can't really see what you'll be saying at this point. So what I've done here is I thought some filo sheet. If you see here, it's very, very delicate. You use that to make baklava. So this will be baklava meets Indian gujia. And what I have here is some kitchen towel that I have made it wet and then squeezed out all the water so it's damp. And then I put it on my filo sheet. What that does is it, it stops it from becoming brittle. Otherwise it's very easy for it to brittle and it'll crumble on you. So we are going to use four filo sheets today. So I'm going to move this aside because I showed you how I assembled it and I'm, we are going to assemble it right here. My oven is preheating to 350 degrees. And I have kept a few extra sheets for the sake of insurance. Now, sometimes these sheets come slightly crumbly, okay? So don't worry about it. It's a lot about patchwork. You're not, we, you will not even know if your, uh, if your uh, filo sheet has a crack like mine does. This is how it came out from the bag, almost cut in half. But you know what? We'll do patchwork. It's absolutely okay. So what we'll do is I have some melted butter here. If you haven't melted it, just put it in the microwave and melt it and then just paint your filo sheet with it. Don't worry too much about the edges because we will cut out the edges. Edges are usually a little bit hard, so we, we can just skip the edges. Just go in the center. Leave the hard edges out. Now to that, I am going to sprinkle some sugar. So what we are doing is we are recreating this uh, casing that goes on top of the gujia, which is basically like a pie dough, but it's made with oil. Now to bring in the flavors of gujia, I'm going to use some cardamom powder. And right now I'm using cardamom powder from Whole Foods. It's organic cardamom powder. And I think it is really good quality. It has great flavor but you don't want to overwhelm it, so I've taken a little bit. Now, those of you who have pods right now, skip that step, just put the sugar, okay? Don't worry about the cardamom at this point. Just sprinkle sugar, put the butter, and here comes my sheet number two. Lay on top of each other, we're layering, we layer four such sheets, okay? Again, we baste it with butter. Everything is better with butter. There you go. Now this step is really important because it adds this flaky, buttery crunchiness to your uh, dessert. So don't skip on the butter. You really need it here. But if you think about the amount of oil or butter that goes in the empanada casing, you're still not using as much. And see, this kind of came off, just patchwork. It's fine, don't worry about it. Good. 
third layer for me, but I have cardamom powder, so I am going to put some. You're, you're going to put about a quarter teaspoon in each layer, just a little sprinkle. It adds that little extra something that people who would be eating this would wonder why does it taste so different from the store-bought phyllo cups. Yes, you can buy them pre-made in the frozen section, but they don't have this magic of sugar and cardamom in between layers. So if you are in a pinch, you can absolutely get that. But I just absolutely love using the cardamom and sugar in between them. And again, some sugar. Just a generous sprinkle and about a quarter teaspoon of cardamom. Just a little sprinkle like that. And my last layer. See, this is also kind of torn. Don't worry about it. And you put a last bit of butter. I'm not worried about sugar on this layer. You can just butter it so that when it goes in the oven, it gets nice and buttery and crispy. There you go. So don't worry about the edges. They are a little bit hard mostly and I'm happy to cut them off. Don't worry about them. Now I have a really sharp paring knife here. You could use a pizza cutter, whatever you might have. And I'm going to just score the edges because I don't want these. They can be a little bit crumbly and hard. And also, it's really tricky to get butter all the way to the edges without really tearing it up, you see? So I'd rather make my life easy and just cut it off. There you go. That also gives me a nice, clean edge. See? Just like that. So now I have my sheets here. Before I start doing anything to de sheet, what I need to do is just grab my muffin tin. You could use a small muffin tin or a regular size. I am using a regular size muffin tin. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna butter it as well. Usually I don't mind using nonstick spray, but uh, for, for this, I, I love the flavor of butter. Now, if you have some ghee or clarified butter lying around, you could use that too. Absolutely, it only will make it even more better. So I'm going to cut little rectangles like this. See, like that. And then I buttered this one. I'm just going to very gently, don't push it down, kind of scooch it in by holding the corners in. Otherwise, you will make a hole in it like this. Like this and take, let it take a nice shape. Now see, this is a slightly unwieldy part. I have no problem just cutting it with scissors. So I'll just take my kitchen scissors and I'll cut it up. There you go. Easy peasy. There you go. So I'll do that to three more. You can make up to six with this, with four sheets at a time. I'm just doing four for right now. Again, I'm not going to push my fingers in, otherwise I will break it. I'm going to slowly ease it in. Make sure the walls come up. And if there is a crazy little corner, you can always cut it up like this. Make sure it's sitting really well in your muffin tin. And here you go. And even if they're poking out, you'll be fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, if you are really a deft with knife, you can also cut out circles, which is great. I just find making rectangles a tiny bit easier. There you go. So these are my lined phyllo sheets with cardamom and sugar layered in between. And what I'm going to do is my oven just told me it's preheated, it's deep. So I'm going to put it in the oven just for, for a very short time till it gets nice and brown. So we really need to keep an eye on it. So here it goes. Great, so it's in the oven. Excuse I me, Sandia. Sandia, 
Uh, someone um, would like to know, do you have to do the sheets part? What do you mean by that? I mean, uh, that's the casing for today. What do you mean, like buttering part or using the sheet part? You know, maybe the, um, the person who asked that question could elaborate in the chat yeah. and then uh, Sandhya could yeah, um, can address that later. That. All right, I'll let you know if I see anything more, um, more pop up in the chat. Try doing this with pie crust. If, if you if, if you want to know, is it important to do use only the phyllo sheets? Uh, the thing with pie crust is even when I roll it out quite thin, because it's got butter in it, it puffs up quite considerably. So what happens is I only taste the pie crust, I don't taste the filling. So if your question meant that do you can you substitute phyllo sheets with something else, you can try a pie crust but roll it out super, super thin. Give yourself more um, uh, flour on your work surface and roll it out till it's really thin and then try doing that. Use water to seal the edges uh, and you can make a half moon shape like an empanada. For me, I just felt it was too doughy, but then we did that. Okay, um, excuse me, Sandia. Can you tell us, um, just um, let us know when the ricotta filling goes in? Yeah, so, it will go in once we are, our curry is simmering. So in another 15, 20 minutes or so. Okay, thanks. So I just cleaned out my surface because I'm changing gears and I'm going to uh, make my um, butter bunny. Okay, so here goes down the camera again. And I'll bring my stove top and my fillet. So let me show you a quick glimpse of my masala boxes. These are my masala boxes and I'm gonna lift my computer to really show it to you. So I have two big boxes. One is for whole spices and one is for the powdered spices. And that's that's a very normal thing you will find in Indian kitchens to have two different masala boxes, one for more everyday spices and one for more special rich uh, whole spices, you see. So what we are going to do is we are going to start with butter. So go ahead, take about four tablespoons of butter, put it in your skillet, just like so. And turn on the heat to low medium, okay? Because you don't want the butter to burn. And what we'll do is we want to put about six pieces of green cardamom. So this is the green cardamom for those who are watching. And inside this are these tiny black seeds. So those who don't have cardamom powder can do this whenever you get a chance while we are cooking, is to take these seeds out. And then you can use either, you can put, you can just bang it with a, a skillet to kind of crush it. Or if you have a mortar and a pestle, you can crush it. The trick that India was to use a few pieces of this and put it with some sugar and then grind it on a mortar pestle so that those few pieces didn't get lost. Sugar just added some bulk to it. So you can just crush it with the back of a skillet, just bang it down with another skillet or a rolling pin or in a mortar and a pestle, whatever you have easy. So I just threw in about four, here are some seeds, about six parts of green cardamom. And I'm going to add about two cloves of two pieces of cloves. Now cloves are very strong, very peppery, so you've got to be careful. And I'm adding some cinnamon. Now you see this cinnamon is the outer bark of the cinnamon tree because you see how rough that is. Unlike the smoother curved cinnamon that you might find more here. So such cinnamon would come more from Eastern part of the world, from Vietnam, from India, you know, so this is really good for you. And actually this is a little bit more peppery and the cinnamon you find here, the curved kind is a little bit sweeter. Excuse so, me, Sonia, yeah. mm -hmm. um, how much ground cardamom would, would you put in there for someone who is using ground cardamom rather than pods? About half a teaspoon for the dessert. Okay, thanks. So I put my uh, cinnamon, my green cardamom, my cloves, and then I have this very interesting ingredient 
which is absolutely optional, but good for you to know if you like Indian food. I have some black cardamom here. And it has a very smoky flavor to it. Inside, there are really thick seeds in there. So I'm going to throw in these in here. Now, the difference between green and black cardamom is that green cardamom is completely edible. You can just uh, chew it. My dad would eat it like a mouth freshener. Uh, the black cardamom, on the other hand, is very intense. It has a very smoky flavor to it. And it's not pleasant to eat it on its own. So that's why outside the Indian restaurants, you might find green cardamom seeds that have been candied for you to enjoy with some fennel. But black cardamom is only used to make your food taste nicer. But if you don't have it, don't worry about it. So these are the things that went in there. Then I have some ginger and garlic that I kind of roughly minced it because you know what? It's all going to go in the food processor. Uh, in the blender. So if you have ginger garlic paste, go ahead, put a good tablespoon of ginger garlic paste in there. If you have uh, the whole thing, just crush it up, mince it roughly, just throw it in there because it's all going to go in the blender. So it does not matter. Okay. Excuse me, Sandhya. Yeah? Um, so as far as the butter paneer goes, how much um, cardamom would you recommend for that, for ground cardamom? Pods. Six pods of green cardamom. But if you don't have the pods, Oh, if you don't have the pods, the, yeah. what do you have? Do they just have the seeds or the powder? The, the ground cardamom, the powder. Oh, then just hold on to it. Because the thing is, if you will put powdered spices in hot butter, it's going to burn and get bitter. So hang on to it. When our dish will be over, I'm going to ask you to add cardamom then at the end. Okay. So the rule is whole spices go in hot oil, hot butter so that it gets toasted. Like my kitchen is smelling wonderful with all the spices. If you're cooking along with me, you will see that your nose is gonna tell you that, oh, my spices are getting toasted. But if you put turmeric, chili, or ground cardamom at this point, it's just gonna get burnt because it's pretty hot right now. So I ground up four tomatoes. I love using Roma tomatoes for this. So now that it's sizzling, my nose tells me it's kind of smelling very fragrant. I am going to put my tomatoes in here. Now, if you see in my recipe, it asks for ginger twice. So save a piece of ginger because in the end, we are going to add a little bit more ginger to make it this uh, over gingery flavor to it okay and fresh tomatoes are absolutely delicious but a little bit of tomato puree or paste would be awesome so just to add a little depth to it so i'm adding some tomato sauce about two tablespoons if you're using tomato paste go ahead and add one tablespoon um sandhya we've just had a request from someone who's cooking along um, if you could just go a little bit more slowly. Where are they? Uh, those who are cooking with me, it, it, did they miss a step? If you did, just message April and I can talk to you back in it. So we just added some butter. In butter, we added the whole spices. We added cardamom. We added clove. We added two pieces of black cardamom, which is absolutely optional. And we added some cinnamon. We added some ginger and garlic, and then we sauteed it. So our nose told us that it's all ready. And then we added puree of four tomatoes, okay? Now, if you are rushing, if you don't have time, you can just throw in roughly chopped tomatoes in there because guess what? This whole thing is going in the blender. So I like to puree it because I think the flavors develop better like that. But if you are rushing, you can do that. Don't, don't worry about it. I have done that in the past. And then I added about two tablespoons of tomato sauce. If you have the concentrated paste, then add one tablespoon. So I'm gonna let this simmer and I'll wait for you to catch up. And in the meantime, if anybody has questions, go ahead and ask away. Okay, so far so good, no more questions, at least not yet. Also to this, I'm going to add my cashews. 
Okay, I have these raw cashews. If you have toasted cashews, that's fine too. As long as they're cashews, even if they're salted, it does not matter. It's about making it easy. It's okay. Well, Sandy, we do have um, a question from someone. She wants to know how long should she cook the phyllo cups? nice and golden that's what you're looking for so if you put in at the same time they should come out like this and they will be nice crispy golden brown Sandy, i'm not sure um all of us heard how long should you cook the phyllo cups that's about 10 minutes 10 so minutes. If okay. golden brown then just take it out because everybody's oven is different and how much butter you're putting will have an impact so if you see how golden that is as soon as they start looking golden in color, just pour them out. So it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. So if you put the phyllo sheets with me, it's time you go check in the oven. So this is simmering, if you see. And I just added cashews to it. Now I'm going to do the next step of adding powdered spices. So somebody who asked me, can we use the uh, powdered cardamom? Now is the time. So you would go ahead and add about half a teaspoon of powdered cardamom. I'm not gonna do that because I had the pot, but you do that. I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. And I have hot red chili pepper, like cayenne pepper. Everybody likes it hot in my house. So I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon. You do what works best for you. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. Everybody has their own version of chili pepper that they like, and you can skip it if you don't want to make it hot at all. Now you see tomatoes are extremely acidic, right? So we need to cook it down, just like Italian cooking, just like with Italian sauces, you want to cook it down so that some amount of acidity goes down and the tomatoes become sweet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lid on it and let it simmer away. I'm going to take this to my back stove only because I need the surface to finish the filling for our Gujia. So I'm going to take it to the back stove. I'll keep the heat low medium and let it cook away. How are the people who are cooking with us keeping up? How's it going for them? Look at my teeny tiny cups. I'm pulling them out from my muffin tin, and if you buttered them nicely, they just pop out so easily. Um, Sandhya, mm -hmm. someone wants to know um, should you add water, or did we add water? I did not add any water, but we'll keep babysitting it, we'll go back and stir it. By the time there'll be need to add water to it, it'll be time to puree it anyway. But you, we will add water. If not now, when we are going to puree it. So if you are feeling like it might burn, go ahead, add about half a cup of water to it right now. If you think it's looking too dry, because all the tomatoes are different, my tomatoes look fine. But if you think yours is looking too chunky, add about half a cup of water to it. You'll be fine with that. So I'm bringing the attention back to my ricotta. So go ahead, bring your ricotta if you're cooking along. And while you get ready for with your nuts and everything, I'm going to just roughly chop some pistachios I have here. So I'm giving, giving you some time to kind of catch up to what I'm doing. I'm just chopping my pistachios. You can use almonds. And the best way to toast any of your nuts is in the microwave. I love it. So if you just put your nuts in the microwave and keep uh, doing, uh, keep running it on 30 uh, second increments, in about one minute or a little bit more, your nuts will become super, super hot. And that's when you want to pull it out because guess what? The nuts have so much oil in it that it's cooking even after you pull them out from the microwave. So don't wait for them to get browned. When they are super hot, just pull it out. Not more than one, one, one and a half minutes. 
So here are my pistachios that I kind of roughly chopped with my knife. You can put it in a Ziploc bag and just mash it if you rather do that, that's fine too. And I have some unsweetened coconut here. If you have sweetened, that's fine too. I have some powdered sugar here. I have ricotta and I will need my cardamom powder again. So now it's just about dumping it all together. So for the amount of sugar, it absolutely depends on your taste buds. Okay, so start with about two to three tablespoons. And once you add coconut and other nuts to it, you might want to revisit the amount of sugar you have there by adding more, but two to three tablespoons is a good place to start. Okay, I'm gonna go stir my tomatoes. So if you're cooking along, this is a good time to do that. Keep your heat kind of a little under medium. Excuse me, Sandhya, was there any salt added to that? Uh, to the uh, to the butter paneer? Yes. No, not yet. Okay. So I'm just kind of making, bringing it all together. Now to this, I'm going to add my coconut. I'm going to add all my pistachios. I'm going to maybe save a few pieces for garnishing. Keep mixing it. And I'm going to add my cardamom powder again. And add it quite generously. It adds wonderful flavor. Mm. Add it generously. It, it adds a wonderful floral flavor to your dish. And now I have something that I'm pretty sure you may not have it with you, but that's okay. It's about knowing and learning new things. I have some rose water here. And a lot of Indian desserts use rose water. And it adds a certain floralness that complements the floralness that you get from cardamom. So just a little bit, it's really strong. So literally like 10 drops of rose water. And I ordered these on Amazon. These are edible rose petals. I'm just gonna add a little bit of those here. Kind of bumps up that flavor. If you don't have it, that's absolutely okay. That was just an extra thing I wanted to show you. It will not affect what you're cooking. But I think I need a little bit more sugar. I just tasted mine because the coconut somehow adding all these things mellows down the sugar you put in the beginning. So now I have about four tablespoons. So mine is at a good place now. It should be a little bit more sweet than what you like because it's going inside something. Uh, if Sandra, it, yeah. Um, can you tell us, um, what do you do with the one inch piece of ginger? Oh, we'll come back to it in the end. We are going to break it inside your uh, dish right at the end. So we are not going to do anything with it right now. Just keep it with you. Okay. So here, I fill my gujia cup. I'm going to garnish it with some pistachio or whatever nuts you're using. You could use raisins, cranberries. You don't have to make it the Diwali. You can make it Thanksgiving good year. <laughs> and here you go. Here's some petals, rose petals in there. And this is surprisingly, surprisingly just like the good year you would get in India without the deep frying, without the um, making the dough, way easier very popular with my Indian friends and it tastes just like gujia, just like my easy American version of Americanized gujia. <laughs> so the filling is very authentic. I just cheated on the outside. Here you go. 
So you can finish all those cups and uh, you can make them and uh, leave them at room temperature. I would admit this does not taste too good if you put it in the refrigerator. You can make the filling, make the cups and assemble it in the last minute and make sure you make this a tiny bit warm when you assemble it because it does not taste very good when it's absolutely fridge cold, okay? So there you go. We are one dish down. And I'm going to remove all these things so that I can bring back my butter bunny. So feel free to ask so any questions if you might have till I'm kind of cleaning up my station and getting ready. Okay, we have a couple of comments that have come in. Um, okay. Somebody has said, it looks so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Another person um, has shared that the filling tastes good even without the, the phyllo cups. Yes, it does. Actually, I don't eat wheat, so I, I saved some just to snack on it later. <laughs> so you were reading my mind, whoever wrote that. <laughs> and you know what I did the other day? I just wrapped it like a spring roll in the phyllo sheet and I put it in my air fryer and it tasted phenomenal. So you could do that too. You know, if you have an air fryer, you could put that in there, just wrap it like a spring roll in, in the phyllo sheet or you could even put it in the oven, just give it a nice layer of butter on the top. But yes, the filling itself, people cannot recognize that ricotta could taste like this. Okay, Sandhya, we had someone who um, who missed the phyllo cups part, but um, she wants to know, are they bought or made at home? Yes, so we did make it at home because what we did is we opened the packet and we took a, we, we are going to use only four phyllo sheets. So what we did is we layered each sheet with not just butter, we added cardamom powder and also sugar between each layer. So that adds a wonderful flavor that people wonder, why does it taste so different? Um, the phyllo cups that you can find from grocery stores will be fine. It's just that it will miss that magic ingredient of cardamom and sugar between layers. So that, that's all we did. So we just layered it, four layers. Then we cut it out in squares or rectangles. And I just put it in my greased muffin tin. And I cut out any extra edges with my scissors. And then we just baked it for barely 10 minutes. It gets brown very quickly. And what temperature did you bake it, uh, Sandia? 350. 350. Okay. And how long does the ricotta take to cook? Oh, it takes, see, you want to cook it on medium, low, medium heat. You don't want high heat for your ricotta. So it does take about 25 minutes or a little bit more, but definitely not more than that. So if you're using about two cups of ricotta, you need to set aside about 25 to 30 minutes for uh, reducing it. And first it gets very watery and then it starts getting thicker. So when it'll hit the heat, it'll kind of spread on you and you'll be like, what just happened? And then if you keep cooking, keep cooking slowly, the water evaporates and it becomes nice and thick. Um, so yeah, and I do use whole milk ricotta because it's richer, of course. So uh, that's another thing. Is everybody doing good? All right, thanks, Sandia. Does anyone have any other questions um, for her before we move on? So I'm going to bring back my butter bunny. There you go. So it's been simmering a little bit. It smells so good when I open it. There you go. So I want it to reduce for a little bit longer. So I'm going to turn on the heat. I'm going to give myself a lid again because I don't want tomatoes to erupt on me, right? Medium heat. And let it simmer for a little bit longer. So till then, I can talk to you about the protein I'm using. So I'm going to use paneer. So paneer is basically like tofu and it does not melt uh, like tofu doesn't melt it's like hard hard tofu but way more flavorful because tofu is water laden uh, this is made with cow's milk so it definitely has a richer taste to it and you can find it at all Indian stores I think at Wegmans too 
what would used to carry it a few years back when I used to teach there? Now I don't know if they still carry it, I'm not too sure. But I've definitely heard Wegman carries it. And of course, all Indian restaurants or Indian stores. Or you could make it on your own, just boil milk, add some acid, vinegar, or lime juice, and it will all curdle. Then you separate the whey from the cheese and press it down. It will not be as firm because it's homemade paneer, but hey, it will be really delicious, but you just have to press it down for a good eight to nine hours, eight to 10 hours rather, so that it becomes kind of firm. Uh, what I do is I get mine from Indian store, I cut it in cubes and I freeze it. So what that does is I have cube paneer always ready for me. Now, instead of paneer, you could use chicken, you could use tofu, extra firm tofu, you could use a medley of vegetables, like use peas, baby corn, uh, potatoes, cauliflower. It's in the curry. What you're going to add is absolutely up to you. Uh, it's a curry that is delicious, right? Uh, Sandy, you're um, referring to the paneer at this point, right? Say that again. Are you re um, referring to the paneer. butter paneer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, somebody wanted to make a comment that she used part skim ricotta and it earlier. It wasn't as rich, but she thought it worked out just fine. Yeah, that's great. I just like fat too much. <laughs> but uh, fat skim is absolutely fine. I'm glad she mentioned that. So, see, my uh, butter paneer is absolutely ready. If you see a few specks of fat floating on the top, it thickens. See how it thickens? So, if you didn't add water earlier, now I'm going to add about half a cup of water to it and I'm going to run it in the blender. There you go. So we were going to add water at some point or the other. It does need water. So I'm going to get rid of my stove because I don't think I'm going to need it for a while right now. And I'm going to bring back my blender and try not to splash yourself and put this in the blender. Now, some Indian houses would put lots of minced onion and caramelize the onions in butter paneer. Everybody would have their own take on it. Some would not put cashews, some would put onions and cashews. So everybody has their own understanding of butter paneer. Some would only use fresh tomatoes. I use a combination of fresh and tomato paste. So it's gonna get noisy because I'm gonna put it in my uh, base now. This is what it looks like. It becomes lighter in color because of the cashews, right? And I'm going to take out the fine tip. I like to use a sieve because the green part of the cardamom can be a little fibrous. The black cardamom is definitely very fibrous. Right? So you don't want to be chewing on those things. Some people really don't mind that. A lot of houses do that. I think my husband is just too finicky about it. And my children are too finicky about it. So I like to strain it out. But hey, you do what works best for you, okay? There's no hard and fast rule for it. I just feel it gives a nice smooth texture to your curry if you just sieve it out. And once you see the residue, you'll be kind of thankful that, oh, good, I used my sieve because you will see black pieces. You see them? This was the skin of the black and green cardamom that you don't want to be eating. It's not very pleasant. And you know what? When you do that, always remember there's a whole lot of goodness under your sieve. So don't waste that. Waste not, want not. And I have 
coming here. So I'm actually going to swirl it with some water. So once again, I absolutely hate this green thing. So I'm gonna just swirl this with water and put that in there. So what that does is it just cleans out my blender and also gives me all the little bits from the bottom. It's all good food after all. There you go. And it also helps me kind of for it to go through faster. Now you see all this, you wanna avoid eating. See, do you see that? So really push it down. Don't be afraid to push it down. There. I'm gonna clean out the bottom of my sieve. And that's a delicious curry like this. and turn on the heat to low medium again. And now I'm going to add my paneer. Now, some people fry the paneer. You can put it in some oil and give it a nice brown color. I'm okay just putting it in like that, but paneer tastes best once it has a uh, once it's warm, nice and hot. Otherwise, it's hard like cold chicken, you know. Any protein when it's cold, it's kind of a little hard. So you want it to come to a boil and simmer for it to really become soft and velvety. So to this, I'm going to add a little bit of cream. I put one fourth cup in your recipe. I'm going to start with about a couple of tablespoons, and then we'll add more if you need more, okay? There you go. And now I need to add a few other ingredients. Now you've been asking me what to do with that piece of ginger, right? Here is my piece of ginger that I peeled. You can peel the ginger with the back of a spoon very, very easily. And now I'm gonna grate some fresh ginger on it. If you don't have a grater, you can just very finely mince it and throw it in your curry. It just adds a very nice gingery punch to it. Sandhya? Yeah? Can we just um, pause for a moment? Go ahead. Um, somebody wants to know what were those blocks that you put in? Paneer. Cubes. Paneer. 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 That was the Indian cheese, yeah. Okay. And somebody else said um, that she fell behind, but did you only add the butter and ginger back to the pan so far? Hmm. So I added butter right in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Right? So I added butter, then I added all the whole spices in there. Then I added the tomato sauce. Then I added the ginger, uh, sorry, the turmeric and chili paste. Then we kind of simmered it for some time. Then we added water to it and blended it. Then we added paneer. And now I'm adding some cream and fresh ginger. So I hope I could catch you up with what I just Okay, said. yeah, she's all set, thank you. Now it's time to add a few other ingredients. The first ingredient would be salt, because we haven't salted it yet at all. Now, salt a tiny bit generously, okay? you'll be surprised how it brings out all the beautiful flavors of your dish. Other thing I'm gonna add is some sugar. Tomatoes and sugar is a marriage made in heaven. So a little bit, start with about half a teaspoon. Then I have this wonderful spice blend called garam masala. Garam literally means hot, but it's not hot to your tongue hot. The spices in here make you feel nice and warm and have a nice and warm smell to it. So there's clove, cardamom, um, cumin and coriander, of course, mace, nutmeg. So you can buy it anywhere. Even McCormick also makes garam masala these days. Just check the ingredient list. It should have exotic spices and should not be full of only cumin, coriander, and turmeric. So it should have exotic spices. It's like vanilla essence. It adds a wonderful flavor right at the end. And I have these dried fenugreek leaves that I'm gonna show it to you. It's an optional ingredient. You will not find it in your American stores. So this is just, it's very, very fragrant. It is fresh 
fenugreek leaves. You might be familiar with fenugreek when you have fenugreek tea. Some of you might have had it sometime in your life. So it's just the fresh leaves are dried up and they become absolutely fragrant and are also healthful. And they add a wonderful flavor to all the creamy Indian dishes. It's almost like a go-to if you're making a creamy dish, you would want to add some fenugreek in the end. It, in fact, it has slight notes of bitterness along with fragrance. And it is that when they make artificial syrup, they use the extract of fenugreek to get that something in the artificial maple syrup. So, you know, if you can understand that kind of a flavor profile, it's got a little a little bitter like good real maple syrup, um, but also very fragrant at the same time. So that, my friends, is your butter paneer. And I'm going to taste it. And if you're cooking along, you also go ahead and taste it. And I like mine. I hope you like yours. <laughs> I think mine needs a little bit more salt, so don't be afraid to salt it, okay? Yeah, I didn't dump the whole box. I just had about half a teaspoon left. <laughs> My kitchen is running short of salt. Sandhya, can you tell us a little bit more about fenugreek? Yeah, so fenugreek is like Indian greens. It's much like bitter and sweet, right? Like kale, if you eat it on its own, if you don't break it down, cook it down, or massage it with oil, it has a certain bitterness. So does fenugreek fresh leaves. But it's also extremely fragrant. So if you are familiar with Indian stores, you will find it there. Fresh fenugreek leaves are there. So usually, it's like a hash. You saute carrots and cumin and then add fresh fenugreek leaves just because carrots are sweet and they are a little bit bitter. Or... A butternut squash, a kabocha squash, and add your fenugreek leaves to it. Um, now, those leaves are dried up and sold in packets in the spice aisle. And you can get dried fenugreek leaves that you can add to your curry. You can't use it as a dish itself, like fresh leaves, but it adds a fragrance to your curries like we did today. If you go to the Indian stores, they also sell the seeds of the same thing. And both my grandparents were very diabetic when we were growing up. And I have memories of them just uh, soaking the seeds overnight. And then they would gulp it down with water the next day to keep their sugar levels low. So it's extremely helpful like that. Uh, but the seeds are extremely bitter. You just want to use a little bit if you're cooking with them just to add a hint of bitterness, another layer of flavor. Anybody else? Because my dishes are ready to go, go, go. It's dinner time here. <laughs> Any questions for me, April? Um, not yet. It looks delicious, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how how are the people doing who are cooking with us? Where are they? If they want to, if they have a moment, they can comment or um, share a picture of what they are doing. I don't know if they would like to do that. They well, our library director actually just sent me a picture of the finished products, Ooh. and it looks absolutely amazing. Can share, and, April. Um, not sure I know how to do that, but she said she's sitting down to eat now and uh, over and out. <laughs> um, I'll let you know. I'm also eating as I'm chatting with you. <laughs> <laughs> she said her kitchen looks like an absolute disaster right now, but I, I think it was well worth it. <laughs> so does mine. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> hey, if you have a good dish, it's all worth that hurricane, right? Right. <laughs> but it's thick, it's creamy, it has a little sweetness. Ooh, somebody's sharing. That looks really good. Can I? Come on. Wow. And what do you have there? Do you have bread? Do you have naan? What do you have there? Okay, someone um, has said she, she's finished it. it. It tastes delicious. Someone else, um, 
thinks hers doesn't seem thick enough. It doesn't seem thick enough. Did you yeah. add too much water to it? Um, <laughs> someone Sarah, said, did you add too much water to that? Uh, perhaps. So just cook it off. Cook it off. off don't don't okay. be afraid to let it simmer. It will thicken on its own. Just cook it off. Okay. All the liquid will evaporate eventually. Don't be afraid to just let it simmer for some time. Charlotte, um, did you share the, your, the pictures of your finished uh, finished dishes? Wait, um, unmute, unmute, unmute. Wait, hang on. Oh. I can hear you, April. Okay. Yes, we shared our um, um, entree, the paneer, and we shared the um, um, the phyllo with ricotta. And how does it taste? Well, the paneer is great. I I add twice the spice because I don't think I add twice the garam masala, twice the turmeric, and twice the um, um, something. What was the other thing? <laughs> Oh, the chili, because I found that it's never spicy enough for us. Mm -hmm. But like it's, spicy. Say, it's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so next time, what you can do is you can add double the chili powder, but other spices have no heat in it. They just add the flavor. So uh, unless you find those flavors overwhelming, you can go with a conservative amount because they're really, really hot. Uh, not hot like burn your tongue hot. They're really hot in the sense they, they can take over your dish. But if you just like heat, add the chili pepper. But if you like what you did, then hey, that's good. Everybody has their own recipe, you know? Yeah, I have a pretty hot chili in here. Um, I, have, I, have, um, I have two of these filled with all my Indian spices since your first class. Oh, I was going to say, that looks so cool. <laughs> You're having a lot of fun. So I didn't have to buy any spice. I just had to buy paneer. And so we were all I spice. love your spice collection there in that box. <laughs> yeah, we have everything you could ask for. I was telling April that. We're really getting into the Indian cooking. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mute again. Thanks, Charlotte. All right, we have a few other comments. Someone has um, said it looks delicious. Um, they would love to have more Indian cooking demonstrations. Well, if you wish to, you guys can buy a gift certificate with me. I have been doing uh, private cooking lessons. Of course, I'm not doing them from my home right now, but uh, once this craziness is over, my kitchen will be open again. And you can buy gift certificates from me for Christmas or birthdays. Um, you can just um, uh, message me on my website. That is sandhyaskitchen.com. And I'm, uh, Brian can put that in, or I am also putting it right now. And I do sell gift certificates. So uh, you can come to me, and then you can choose anything from my menu, which is mostly really uh, popular Indian food. And my aim is to make it very easy for you and yet create the authentic Indian flavors. So you can buy a gift certificate from me anytime and then come, come in my kitchen once we all are in a normal world again. Um, Sonia? My website's name. Sonia, what would you recommend serving the butter paneer with as, as sides? Rice. Rice is great. Rice? Naan is great. Indian breads are great. So if you are familiar with Indian stores, they do sell frozen uh, Indian bread, like roti, paratha. These are Indian flat breads. You could use any of those. But just boiled plain rice is delicious with them. All right. Thank you. All right. Did everybody get a chance to see Sandhya's website? Um, Sonia's Kitchen. Did you, oh wait, did it appear in, the, did you write it in the chat? I think Brian also did something and I also put it in. Okay, great. Yep, so www. Wants to go check it out, yep. yep. It's on the Kitchen and 
the good thing is then you can choose anything you want to learn and then you could hands on with me rather than me showing you how to do it okay so it's sandiaskitchen.com um, somebody said yes it's a great website thanks for sending the recipes in advance which helped a lot absolutely all right, any, any other questions before we call it a night? Okay, um, the big shout out to Apna Bazaar for, um, you know, having all the ingredients that were necessary Absolutely. for these dishes. It's my very favorite store, Apna Bazaar, and good ingredients, good spices, and I'm so glad uh, uh, you said that. Apna Bazaar is awesome. All right, anything else? Well, thank you so much, Sandia. That seemed to be a big yeah. hit and a great success. So enjoy. Thank you for having me over here. <laughs> enjoy the fruits of your cooking tonight. I know, right? <laughs> right. Okay, thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, good night. Enjoy your food.